Hey guys, I'm Burke, and today I've got a really cool project I'm going to be working on. Uh, a while back I saw a video on the I Like to Make Stuff channel, and he put together uh, this little clock kit. He soldered it all up on the board and everything, and then he put it inside of a wood cube and covered the whole thing with maple veneer so that when it was plugged in, you could see the LED clock numbers shining through the veneer. Now I thought he did a great job, but there were a couple things I wanted to do a little bit different. And so I went searching around and I actually couldn't find anybody that is, had done what I'm gonna attempt to do here today. So let me tell you about it. I uh, went to Walmart and I bought just uh, one of these $5 LED alarm clocks. I actually bought two of these because I'm going to make two of these for my teenage sons for Christmas presents. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. Um, but these have numbers that are about uh, five eighths of an inch tall and really bright LED. Um, so it should show through the maple veneer really well. And uh, so I'm going to take this thing apart, pull the guts out of it, and then I'm going to construct a wood cube that they fit inside of. and cover the whole thing with maple veneer. So I'm gonna have to learn some new techniques. I've never, I've never done any veneering, and uh, I think I know what I'm gonna do, but it'll be a whole new experience for me. So hopefully it turns out good, and let's get started. So we're gonna get this clock taken apart and see what we have inside of it. To take the case apart, there were just four screws that came out, and then the case came apart. There were a couple more screws inside that held the LED board on there with some electronics on it, and the transformer. I also went ahead and cut the wires to the speaker because I'm not gonna use this for an alarm clock once it's finished. I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna access the controls that set the time, and so I looked at those buttons a little bit, and I think I figured out how I was gonna do it, um, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Then I went to the radio alarm saw and ripped all the plywood to the right size for the boxes. And then off to the miter saw to cut everything to length. On the front of the box, I marked out the center of the box so then I could use that as a reference point when I marked the opening I was gonna be cutting. So I measured the size of the LED screen and marked that on the wood. Now this was my first mistake. I should have measured the size of the whole board. Drilled some holes and then used the, the saber saw to cut the opening. The blade bent so the, the opening really wasn't square. And here you can see my first mistake. That whole board needed to be able to fit into the plywood so that the LED panel would sit flush against the front of the wood. So I made the opening bigger. And I tried to use a chisel to open it up more, and this was really an exercise in frustration. So after a little bit of that, I decided it was time to take a different course. Using a chisel on plywood just didn't work very well. So I moved over to the scroll saw, and this made quick work of cutting the opening. The sides were nice and square, unlike they were with the saber saw, and uh, it just worked really, really well. It had square corners and square sides, and the opening was exactly the right size to fit the whole board in there. So I went down to the electronics workbench, cut the power cord off, and I'll reattach that later once the box is complete. I went ahead and stripped the wires and twisted them so when it came time to hook that back up, it'd be easier. So I put the whole board in the hole with the LED panel on the bottom. I wanted this to be perfectly flush with the face of the plywood so when I veneered over it, the light would shine through the veneer really well. I then just took some hot glue, tacked it in place, and then really filled in a whole bunch of hot glue to make sure that thing didn't move. I needed to figure out which side was gonna be the top so I knew where to put the buttons. So once all the hot gluing was done, I temporarily connect the power and make sure which side was going to be up and which side was going to be down. The black bar in the video is the buttons to use to set the time. 
So here I am reconnecting it temporarily. So once that was verified, I knew which side to put the board that has the switches on it, the time set buttons, and I just hot glued that to the bottom of that piece. And then I hot glued in the transformer as well to this piece of wood. Everything's really secure. That hot glue really stuck well. This is back to the garage to assemble the box, which I did with some, some wood glue and some brads. The box does not have a bottom on it, so that way you can just reach inside and access the buttons to set the time with. When it's sitting on your desk, you don't notice it anyway. There you can see up in the bottom of the box. Even though I was really careful, the pieces still didn't line up perfectly. So I went to the belt sander and sanded everything smooth. That way there wouldn't be any bumps or anything in the veneer once I attached it. This worked really well. Just turned the belt sander upside down and ran it over the top of it. All the sides ended up really, really smooth to each other. The only veneer I could find locally was a paper-backed maple veneer. Worried me a little bit whether the LEDs would be able to shine through the paper backing, but it all turned out fine. So here I just cut the individual pieces for each side of the box. I just used a sharp utility knife for this. I put a new blade in it and it cut right through it. Then it was time to apply the contact cement. Now I've never used any kind of veneer product before, so this was all a brand new experience for me. Basically I just painted on the contact cement onto each side of the box. Now I use the flammable ver version of contact cement, so if you do this, make sure there's no open flames nearby. So once the box was coated, then I started coating all of the pieces of the paperback veneer. It goes on real easily. I just put a nice smooth coat on there, just making sure that every part had some contact cement on it. Once it's done, you let it dry until it's dry to the touch, which is pretty weird to think about. And then you just press it down. I took a piece of pine, rounded some corners, and used that as a pressure block to really apply some pressure and, and smooth it down. So all the pieces are cut oversized so you don't have to perfectly align anything. The one tip I'll give you here is when you trim it back to size, leave a little bit extra um, instead of trying to cut it right against it and then sand it back to the edge. So I applied veneer to all of the sides and then I did the front last. It went really quick and it was really stuck. I was really surprised how good the contact cement works. It's my first time using it and I'll definitely use it again. So I just took some 220 sandpaper and sanded all the edges back very carefully so that it's a nice tight corner on the veneer. You can't see the paper backing at all on the corners. It really just looks like one big chunk of maple. I was also careful on the grain orientation. So the grain on the front runs right to left and then on the sides it runs front to back. That way it kind of just turns the corner nicely. I spent quite a bit of time just carefully sanding the edges so that it was just nice and smooth transition and you couldn't get a fingernail hooked on it or anything like that to pull off the veneer. Then I hit each box with two coats of polyurethane, sanding with 400 grit in between. I drilled a hole in the back of the box and fed the power cord in through that hole. I tied a knot in the cord so that you couldn't pull the wire back out of the box. And then I just simply used some wire nuts and connected the power cord to the power wires that were inside the box. When you do this, make sure you pull on your wires after you put the wire nut on, just to make sure they're securely held together. Here you can see the bottom of the box. The black bar at the, towards the top is the buttons that are used to set the time, so it's easily accessible. 
and there it is plugged in it's a thing of beauty actually the leds show up better in in real life than they did here on the camera it looks really cool well i got them done just in the nick of time for christmas these were really fun projects for me to do um, and I did some new techniques I'd never used veneer before and or contact cement so putting the veneer on these uh, was a new experience and it was much easier than I thought it would be and they turned out really nice the edges are really nice uh, the veneer took the polyurethane really nice and uh, they just look awesome so um, if you have any questions or comments about this project please leave it in, in the comment section below and I'll definitely get back with you on any questions you might have. If you like this project, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'll have more like this in the future and I wouldn't want you to miss them. So until next time, keep on making.